So today we're going to be rounding out our series on cross-type communication by covering how to do it using a broadcast channel. A broadcast channel is kind of the native browser API for actually handling cross-type communication. Now the main downside about using a broadcast channel today is its browser compatibility. So if we take a look at it, you can see there's no Internet Explorer support, which in this day and age isn't a deal breaker. However, there is also no Safari support on either desktop or mobile and that very well could be a deal breaker right now. However, if Broadcast Channel does gain Safari support, this is gonna become a great way to go about cross-tab communication. That's also very browser compatible. So just like the previous two lessons that we did on local storage and shared workers, I have a repository up on GitHub that we will be working from. There is a branch called 00 start here. You can go ahead, hop over to that branch, clone that branch down. Once you have that cloned down, you can hop into your terminal, install the single dependency that we have called serve, and then run npm run serve to get our local server up and running. Next, you can go ahead and open that up in your browser. I already have it open here. You should be welcomed by a page like this. You can go ahead and jump over to the broadcast channel page. And then let's go ahead and get our console open so that we're ready to go. Next up, let's jump into our text editor with our project open. We can head into the pages broadcast channel index.html file. This is where we're gonna be working today. A quick overview of the page. We have our navigation, our heading, a not completed yet div that we can now get rid of, our form for sending messages, our form for clearing messages, a placeholder if we should have no messages, and our ordered list for displaying our messages. We have a couple of global constants here as well, as well as a couple of utility functions. Okay, so before we dive into the functionality of our page, let's go ahead and take a look at how to work with a broadcast channel. So first and foremost, we're gonna to need to create a broadcast channel. So let's go const broadcast equals new, broadcast channel and then we just need to give it a name so we're just going to call this message broadcast and then this is going to work a lot like our shared worker so we're going to be able to subscribe to new messages using a broadcast.onMessage event handler and we can just give this a function that accepts an event and we for right now we'll just console.log out that event Okay, let's go ahead and save that and we will play around with posting messages within the browser. So let's jump into our browser, refresh our single tab that we have open. Let's open up another tab and then let's go ahead and get the console open in that tab so we can see our console log. Jump back to the first one. And then since we saved our broadcast channel on the global scope, we should have access to it here via broadcast and we can do broadcast.post message and we can send in our message, which we'll just do message one for right now. Let's go ahead and send that. And we see nothing on this tab, but if we jump over to our other tab, we can see we got our message here with our event. And if we dive into that message, we can see event.data is message one. So the key takeaway here is that we did not get a broadcast on message event on the tab with which we posted the message from. However, on the other tab, we did get that. So anytime that we post a message here, we're gonna need to account for that message being added on the tab with which we send it from. Very similar to how we had to do it with our local storage solution. And that's really all that it takes to communicate cross tab using a broadcast channel. So let's go ahead and dive into our code base and continue along with our application's functionality. So instead of having a direct function handler here for our on message event, let's go ahead and pass it a function, which we'll call handle new message. In addition to this, let's go ahead and set up our submit event handlers for our two forms. So document forms send message form dot add event listener for submit and we'll call this handle send message and then document forms clear messages form dot add event listener for submit and we'll call this handle clear messages make sure the messages is capital there we go and now let's go ahead and create those function handlers. So function handle send message, which will take in an event. And since this is a form event, we're going to want to event prevent default. And then let's go ahead and grab the value of our message so that we have that ready. Const value equals event target message value. And then we will make message post message and then after that's done we want to event dot target reset to reset our form and then event dot target message to grab our message input and let's just refocus it 
Okay, that'll do it for now for handle send message. Let's go ahead and do function handle clear messages. And then this one's also gonna take an, an event. Let's make this callable from within our code base. So let's do if event, then we will event prevent default so that we can call it directly without an event being passed in. And then here we'll want to clear messages and post new collection. And then third, let's do function handle new message. And this will take in our broadcast channels event, which if we take a look back, the only key that we really care about here is our actual data that we're passing through. So let's go ahead and just spread our event so that we have direct access to our data. And we'll just leave this function blank for right now. Okay, so one of the nice things about the broadcast channel is that we can post our data in any way that we need. So for instance, if I post this object here and we go take a look at it on our other tab, you'll see that it comes through exactly the same way that we posted it out as an object with our key and our Boolean value. So we're gonna make use of this within our application by posting our messages as an object with a unique identifier, a sender ID, which identifies which tab instance we sent our message from, and then our message. So let's go ahead and create a helper function so that we can easily create that object. So function make message, we'll take in the message string, and then we'll return back an ID, and then we have a helper function down below called get unique ID, which generates a unique ID. Our sender ID we have as a global called tab sender ID, which is unique per tab instance. And then let's just tack our message on to the end of that object. And then within our handle send message, we can cross off our make message to do here. So we can do const message equals make message, and we can pass in our value. And then we're gonna to wanna to keep a collection of all of our messages within our code base as well. So let's come up to the top here and let's do let all messages equals an empty array. And then anytime that we make a new message, let's add to that array. So all messages dot push message. So now in addition to our messages themselves being objects, we're also going to tack on an additional key to this called mutation. And what we'll be able to use this for is so that we can decipher which type of action we need to perform whenever we do post a message to our other tab. So up at the top of our code base here, let's go ahead and add in another const called mutations. And these are just gonna be an object of key value pairs for the different mutation options we're gonna have. We're gonna have one called add, and this is just gonna be a key of add and a value of add. And then we'll do the same thing with set. So whenever we pass through the mutation of add, we know that we are adding a new message. And whenever we call the mutation of set, we know that we are setting the entire mutation collection. So in other words, we're gonna to wanna to overwrite our all messages value completely. So next, let's go ahead and create another function down below make messages called function post message. And this is essentially just gonna be a wrapper around our broadcast dot post message so that we can perform some other actions within here as well. This is gonna take in the mutation type that we're going to be posting to our other tab, as well as the value of our message object. So within here, let's create a const called data and this is going to be the collection of our entire post message value. So we're gonna have our mutation, we're gonna have our value, and then let's also tag on the entire message collection that we have at this point in time. So let's do messages, all messages. Next, let's go ahead and update our local storage. Remember local storage in this case is just being used so that we can persist our messages whenever we reload our browser. So let's do set stringified storage item. This is one of the utilities defined down below. We just pass in the messages key that we have and all of our messages. Okay, and then let's go ahead and post our message using our broadcast. So broadcast.post message, and we just pass in data. And now remember that whenever we call this, it's not going to reflect directly to the tab instance with which we are calling post message from. So in addition to posting our message from this tab, we also need to accommodate for that new message on this tab itself. So whenever we're posting a message, it's safe to say we also want to handle a new message. So let's go ahead and call handle new message here. And we can pass in an object of our data and data needs to be wrapped within an object because we are extracting data from our event on our handle new message function. Okay, so now that we have our post message function created, we can go ahead and finish up our handle send message and handle clear messages functions. Okay, so where we have our post message, let's go ahead and call our post message function. We're gonna pass in the mutation of add, so mutations.add here, since we are posting a new message 
we'll be adding a message to our collection. And then the value that we want to pass through is our message. And now to keep the data type for our two different mutations here the same every time that we're posting a message, I'm going to go ahead and wrap our message in an array. This is just going to take the question of what data type am I posting here out of the question. It's just always going to be an array. And then next, let's go ahead and finish up our handle clear message. So all that we need to do here is clear out our message collection. So all messages equals an empty array. And then we just need to post this new collection to our other tabs. So mutations, and we're gonna be setting here so that the other tabs know to overwrite their message collections with the new one that we're passing through. And it's just gonna be our empty array. So we have our handle send message and handle clear message functions wrapped up. Let's go ahead and wrap up our handle new message. So from within our data, we're gonna to wanna to extract out each of the keys that we care about here. So let's do const. We're gonna extract out the mutation type that we're running, the value that we are changing, and then our entire messages collection. So mutation is either going to be add or set. Value is going to be our message object. And then messages is going to be an array of our message objects of all of the messages that we have. And remember, we're putting that all together within our post message function. So now every time that we're handling a new message, we can assume that the messages collection that we're posting through contains the latest full array of our messages. So what we can do is go ahead and overwrite all messages with our messages. Next up, let's go ahead and determine whether or not to show our placeholder. So let's do messages.length. If we have any messages, then we will want to hide our placeholder element. So hide L is a utility I have defined down below. And then we'll just pass in our messages placeholder L. Otherwise, we'll want to show L messages placeholder L. And then finally, we need to handle our value based off of the mutation type that we're running. So now what I'm about to write can be simplified. However, just to kind of give you an easier view of what we're doing here, I'm going to write it this way. So let's do switch mutation. Let's do a case for our mutations dot add. So anytime that we pass through the mutation type of add, we know that we want to add in our new messages. So what we'll do here is we will display those new messages and then we'll break out of our case. And then next we need to handle our set mutation. So let's do case mutations.set. And then here we know that we need to completely overwrite our messages collection as a whole, which technically we are doing up here already. So really all that we have left to do here is to clear out our current ordered list, list items, and then just re-add them all back in with our new all messages collection. So let's do messages l inner HTML. Let's just clear that out to an empty string. And then here we will display new messages. And then we can go ahead and break out of that. And since we only have two different mutation types, that's all that we need to do there. So next, let's go ahead and write up a function to display our new messages. So we can do function display messages. And that will take in our messages. And we can default that to an empty array in case any are not passed in. And then for this, we'll just want to do messages for each. And then we're looping over each of our message objects. So we can do message and then messages L append child. And then let's create another helper function called make message L and let's pass in our message object to that. So function make message L. And then we know that we're passing in our message object containing our ID, sender ID, and message. So let's go ahead and extract those out so that we have direct access to those keys. So message ID and then sender ID. That should be sender ID. There we go. Let's go ahead and create our new LI element. So document.create element and li. Let's add in our ID as our li's ID. Our li's text content is just going to be our message. And then for our li, let's define a class name. And this class name is going to be dependent upon whether we are viewing the message on the tab with which we sent the message from or the tab we receive the message from. So here we can do, so here we can do sender ID equals tab sender ID. If the messages sender ID equals the current tabs sender ID, then we will want to display our message BG blue 600. So a blue background, the text will be white. And then we're going to align it to the right. So place self end since we are using grid on our ordered list. Otherwise, if our sender ID does not equal our tab sender ID, which means we receive the message on this tab, let's display it with BG 
gray 700, so it's gonna be a gray background. The text here will be white as well, and let's align it to the left. So place self start. And then let's also define some shared classes. So const base class name. These are gonna be classes that apply for both, px3, py1, rounded, and I guess really we could put text white here as well, but we will leave that as is. And then for both of these cases, we will just extend in that base class name. And then finally here, we just wanna return our li. Okay, and then finally here, we need to just call display messages where we have these two comments. So display messages, and we can just pass in value since we are keeping value as an array of our message or messages. So for both of these cases, we'll just want to call display message value. Okay, and then I also see a typo down here. I got a capital E on my make message L, and that should do it. That should get us up and running with sending and receiving new messages. So let's go ahead and open it up in the browser and give it a test. So let's refresh both of the tab instances that we have open, and let's try to send a message. So test one, send, and it looks like we got an error. All messages is not defined. Looks like I forgot to capitalize the M in messages at our post message. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. So post message, which is down below, and then all message. So that should just have a capital M. Go ahead and save that. Let's check out our other tab and we can see it did not post out. So let's go ahead and refresh and try that again. So send and no error this time. Let's see, check out our other tab instance and there we go. Showing up there too. Let's try from this tab. Test two. I forgot to refresh, so let's let's refresh here. Test two. And test two is showing up over here. Okay. And you'll realize that whenever we refreshed, we lost our test one over here. That's because we're not currently loading our message in from our local storage. Let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and just add in another function called load messages. And then within here, we'll want to get our messages. And then once we have those, we can post message mutations.set since we'll want to tell all of our tabs to update their latest all message collection with the fresh copy that we just grabbed. And so we can pass in all messages once we get that. So let's go ahead and create our get message function. So function get messages const messages equals get parsed storage item, which is one of the helpers I have down below pass in our messages key and then we'll want to return if not array is array our messages then let's just return back an empty array otherwise we're clear to send back our messages and then let's replace our get messages with all messages equals get messages and then finally we need to call load messages so let's scroll back up to the top here and then underneath our event listeners let's just add a call to load messages and go ahead and give that a save Let's jump over to our tab, refresh. You can see we got test two. That's because whenever we added that test two, it overwrote our local storage. So we lost test one from within there, but we should be able to refresh on both tabs and see that we get test two. Let's add test three and test this out again. We should keep test two. There we go. And there we go. And then finally, we just need to test our clearing of messages. So once we click this, it should clear our message collection on both tabs. So clear messages, cleared it here, cleared it there. If we refresh, we're cleared and we're cleared. And we should be able to add some back. So looks like everything's working okay. And that's gonna wrap it up for this series. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something, hopefully you've enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe and have a great day.